So let's do that. What is the orthogonal component of f double prime with respect to t in direction of f prime of t? All right, I know what the f double prime is. So I'm looking at orthogonal component of this stuff. Uh, Okay, let me make let me make a first observation. Or maybe no, sorry. Let me just do the conversion. So uh, the second derivative is converted like that. It is G double prime of s multiplied by s prime of t, which is squared, plus g prime of s, and that's a vector again, multiplied by s double prime of t. So this is the old acceleration vector. Now what about my velocity vector? For the velocity vector, I have a formula relating that vector to the vector I want, to g prime of s. So let me just stick it in. It is g prime of s times s prime of t. And of course, absolute value of the whole thing. OK. All right, so I'm closer to my goal of getting this quantity at the end. Now, what can I do with that? Um, okay, the first observation. If I think about one vector, and I think about orthogonal component of that vector with respect to this vector. So let's uh, look at example. Orthogonal component of a vector u in the direction of the vector v multiplied by 7. All right, so I multiplied this vector by some number. Isn't it the same thing is as orthogonal component of u with respect to v? Sure. Sure, the same thing, right? Because the only thing that matters when you compute orthogonal component is the direction of this vector. So that means I can drop that s prime. Right? So I have now orthogonal component with respect to g prime of s. And that was my goal, to get g prime of s right here. So I, I'm getting it for free. So I can just switch from that vector to this vector because they're related by a constant. Now, what about this quantity? Well. Uh, I will split these two, and I will compute orthogonal component of the first summand. So orthogonal component of this g double prime of s times s prime of t squared. This is a vector. And I will separately find orthogonal component with respect to g prime of s of this vector, of the vector g prime of s times s double prime of t. And absolute value of, of the whole sum, of course. So, what can we say about these two things? There is something we can say about this one. What is the orthogonal component of that vector with respect to this vector? Zero. Why is it zero? Because it's the same vector. It's really about the same direction. 
because they go in the same direction. That's it. So orthogonal component of this with respect to that is zero. So the whole thing boils down to absolute value of orthogonal component with respect to G prime of S of what? Of a vector. By the way, this is exactly the vector I wanted. Right? The second derivative of G with respect to S. Multiplied by some number. multiplied by this s prime of t squared. Okay. Now, if you measure orthogonal component of a vector, and then you multiply that vector by a number, what happens to orthogonal component? It is multiplied by the same number. So, so let's imagine again. You look at the orthogonal component of a vector 2u right, with respect to the vector v. Isn't it the same thing as 2 times orthogonal component of u with respect to v? Yeah. Sure, it is the same thing, right? If you double the vector, its orthogonal component doubles. Its projection also doubles. Well, everything about this vector doubles. So that means what you have here is the absolute value of orthogonal component of g double prime of s with respect to g prime of s multiplied by a single number, which is s prime of t squared. So we found the relation between that number and that number. Right? This is the number measured by the first car. This is the number measured by the second car. And they are related by a square of something. So what we have to figure out is what that something is. What is derivative of s with respect to t? So what do you think it is? Yeah, that, that's another funny stuff. I introduced a function here, right? I made you think about the function. And we have no idea what the function is. But we were able to do computations, and we were able to relate two complicated formulas. But the relation involves the derivative of that function. So here's another thing. Although we, no, we don't know what this function is, we will be able to find what the derivative is. So what is s prime of t? Because that's what we want. That's the coefficient relating to measurements. 